Hi, I'm Kaylee from Argus Space, and on this week's episode, we're going to show you the complete Aerospike engine and explain how it works. As promised in the last week's episode, here we have the Demonstrator 3 Aerospike rocket engine. This engine is made basically of uh, two main sections. The central section that is uh, pretty much cylindrical in shape and the two exhaust uh, chambers on each side of the engine, left and right. On top of the Aerospike engine, we are going to have the hydrogen peroxide uh, tank. And between the tank and the engine, we have a cap that prevents the hydrogen peroxide to go directly into the engine. Now, on the cap, we have a conduit that is going inside the engine, and at the end of the conduit, we have the injection head. Between the cap and the injection head, we have a pressure burst uh, disc. The burst disc is going to break, and the hydrogen peroxide is going into the injection head, and from the injection head is injected in the catalyst bed that is placed on the bottom of the, um, of the engine. When the hydrogen peroxide touches the catalyst bed, a decomposition reaction is going to start. The liquid starts to decompose into um, oxygen and uh, water vapors. The reaction is taking place at 250 degrees uh, Celsius and uh, the gases are going to be channeled through these two side chambers. The chambers are continuing with a convergent, divergent uh, nozzle and uh, here in the throat area of the nozzle, the gases are reaching supersonic speed and then they are continuing to expand on this physical divergent section of the nozzle and then they continue to expand throughout the whole length of the aerospike ramp. Next week, we are going to start preparing the tests for the central section of the engine, for the chambers and for the injection head. This week we've got our load cells, which I've been calibrating and testing. Now these will be used for our Aerospike engine tests. And due to the distance between the exhaust chambers, we want to use multiple load cells to make sure that the distribution of thrust of the engine is even across all points. And that's all we have for this week's episode. Leave your questions and comments below and we'll see you next time on Flight of the Aerospike.